Hi again, let's talk about uh, JavaScript and making a shopping cart here. And in our last video, we added, you know, remove item from cart all to clear, you know, one item completely from the cart. Um, we'll just leave these tests in here for now. Um, and this next function here, clear cart, it should be pretty easy, you know. This will just remove everything from the cart, so the cart will be totally empty when we call on this, right? And, you know, we can just actually just do that by just setting cart equal to an empty array, okay? We actually might want to do more logic in here because there might be things we want to do when we, when we empty the cart, right? But, you know, for now, I think we can just clear it just by setting it to the empty array. You know, we can test that one. I'll leave the current test in there, right? Um... Right, so I'll, I'll leave this current test in here, and let me actually comment this out just for a moment, right? And if I if I look at the uh, the page here, you can see I got six items, and then I got five items because I removed one of them. And now we'll add we'll add a console log here, but maybe we'll call you know clear cart right before it, and then we'll display the cart afterwards, and we'll see what it says, right? So that way we can test it. Oh, look, so we had six items, five items, and then no items, right? So I think that that's kind of working, you know? Might have to do a little more. Depends on how your, how your system's going to work with the cart, right? But, you know, for what we're doing here, I think that this is going to work, right? Okay, so um, now let's get into something more interesting, right? Count the cart. Okay, so, so this function is going to return a value. Right, so some functions, you know, like when we saw earlier, we could pass values into the function. Like, you know, for example, we're passing the name in, so we can remove the, an item with that particular name. And then over here, we're passing a name, so we can decrement an item with that name. And over here, we're passing three values in, right, to set a new item with a name, a price, and account, right? Um, and none of those returned a value. They all, you know, we, we passed information into the function and the function did something with it, but it didn't give us anything back, right? So this, um, this count cart function is going to return a value, okay? So it's going to give us the total number of items in the cart, okay? So we'll say function, and we'll, I'm going to remove this thing here. Let's actually put a, you know, comment there, right? And then I'll, I'll put my curly braces here, right? So what is this going to do, okay? So what I'd like this function to do is I'd like it to tell me how many items I have in the cart. But the number of items in the cart is going to be the total of the counts for each of the items. You know, because I mean, I might have, you know, two items in the cart, but if I have three apples and five pears, I really have eight items total in my cart, okay? So let, let's do that. So again, we'll, we'll get to our for loop here, and we'll loop through all the items, okay? Wait, I kind of lost the cursor there. Let's, so we'll do uh, for var i in cart, right? And then now I want to, um, you know, total up all the counts and then return them at the end here, okay? So what we'll need is we'll need a variable here. Maybe we'll call it total count, and we'll set it equal to zero when we begin. So we need a variable to work with, and I'm going to put it outside of the for loop, because if I define total count equal to zero inside the loop, then every time I begin the loop, it'll start with a value of zero, right? But I want it to start with a value of zero outside, and then every time we go in here, I want to say, you know, total count plus equals cart the uh, item at index i dot count, right? So we're going to take the count of a particular item and add it to the total count. And then that'll give us a sum of all the items in the cart. So let's do return total count, right? And then uh, that's, I think that's kind of good, right? So uh, how are we going to do this? Let me get rid of clear cart because if I clear the cart here, then, you know, there won't be anything to count, right? So let's let's give this a quick test. What if we said, you know, um, uh, console log, 
And now remember, when we return a value from a function, we're calling on that function, and then, you know, it's the equivalent, like, you know, if this returned a value of 11, then, you know, we can imagine that that, when we called on this and it returned 11, we can imagine that the 11 was right here, okay? So, you know, we're, we're if we put the, you know, the function name that we're calling right here, if we call on the function inside log, then whatever it returns is what we'll see in the output window or in the console, okay? So, uh, so we'll call on that, and then let's see how many items we have in our cart, right? We'll, uh, we'll uh, go back to the browser here, and it says I have 13 items. Hmm, let's, let's add that up, right? Let's test it for ourselves, right? So, uh, so what do I got here? I got, um, you know, 1 plus 3 is 4, 5, 8, 9, 10, 11... 12, 13, 14, but actually I removed the car, so 13. So that looks pretty good. We could do a more robust test, but that would, uh, and that I think that's kind of working, right? You know, and we might want to do more again with all these functions, but uh, but we'll save this, right? So now we got our count. Um, let's give it a try with the total. So we're going to do the same thing here, but a little bit different for the total, okay? So the total is going to be the total cost of the entire cart. Okay, so we'll make this a function. Uh, we'll put the curly bracket here. And then we'll close this off, right? So we got our curly bracket. And then we'll make a variable. We'll say total cost equals zero, right? Because we don't know how much, how many items we have yet, right? So we'll say total cost is zero. And then we'll do var i in cart and now what I want to do is I want to get the the price of every item in the cart and then add them up so we'll say total cost plus equals uh, cart item i dot price okay so we'll add the price here for each item you know in the cart and then when we're done, we'll return the total cost. Okay, so let's find out how much is in our cart. So maybe I'll, you know, we'll do the same thing we did here where we just log the, the value returned from the function. So we'll say console.log. And then we'll do total cart. Okay. So let's give that a try. We'll save it, and then um, and then we'll go over here and we'll refresh it. So right now we're getting the total count is thirteen, and the total cost is thirteen seventy six. <clears throat> now that's a little harder to add up in your head. I'm going to assume that that's correct for now. Okay, and we're going to come back and look at numbers later because numbers in JavaScript get a little strange, especially when you get into the decimal. And my numbers are working out pretty good here with the two decimal places, but we can't always count on having the two decimal places. We'll have to, um, you know, especially massage the numbers to make sure that they always come out with the with the two decimal places correctly, okay? But we'll, we'll revisit numbers in a little bit, okay? Um, but anyway, so there we go. So we got our total cart, we got our cart count, um, we might want to get the total for any particular item in the cart. I actually didn't write that function in here, but now that I'm thinking about it, maybe, you know, if I give it a name, maybe I want total cart to give me the total just for that one item, you know, and we could modify this function to do it or make a new one. But maybe maybe we'll do that in another video. So, um, so we've got that, and then we've got these last couple things to do here. List cart, save cart, and load cart. So list cart is going to show us or display a list of, of the cart in the console, and this will really help us with debugging. So when we when we do this one, we'll do some more, you know, serious tests for debugging. 
And then when we do save cart and load cart, we'll start talking about using local storage to um, save the cart so we can, you know, save the data in the cart from different browsing sessions or between pages. Like if we go from one page to another, we can show the cart on any of the pages, right? So anyway, so we'll, we'll stop this video here and then um, you guys can practice with this stuff. And, you know, let me know if this helps you out or if you have any other questions. And thanks for watching.